pharmacist. Welcome to part two of our cannabis series. In this video, we're going to be talking about those very important chemicals that are found within cannabis. More specifically, the ones that are produced and stored within the trichomes of the plant. Now, if you don't know what trichomes are, be sure to watch the first video in this series. The fascinating thing about cannabis is that there are over 500 different chemicals that can be isolated. And these can be subdivided into two categories. You've got your non-cannabinoids and you've got your cannabinoids. So let's start with our non-cannabinoids and we're going to be talking about two of them specifically. The first one are terpenes. Terpenes are responsible for the smell and the aroma of the cannabis plant. Over 100 different types of terpenes have been detected, and that's why there's so many different strains with so many distinctive flavors, such as berry or citrus or pine. And these flavors can produce effects for users. That's why you'll commonly see things like flavor wheels, uh, such as this, that licensed producers or other cannabis companies have produced. And what they show are the terpenes and the effects that are associated with it. So you can compare this to aromatherapy, for example, since that's something you might be familiar with, such as eucalyptus or lavender, and just like how lavender may produce relaxing effects for a user, so too can these different terpenes that are found within the cannabis plant. Next, we move on to flavonoids. Now, just like terpenes, flavonoids are not unique to the cannabis plant, hence why they're called non-cannabinoids. And you'll find these in many different types of flowers or foods that we eat, and they all lead to this pigmentation that we see in the cannabis plant and other things, such as the blue in blueberry or the red in raspberries. So think of it like that. Most of these non-cannabinoids work synergistically with the other chemicals found within the plant, and that's probably something that I'll repeat throughout this video. This is known as the entourage effect, and I'll get to what that is towards the end of the video after we discuss all of the compounds. So now let's move on to the cannabinoids. While there are over 120 different types of cannabinoids, there are two in particular that are found in a higher concentration that are thought to be or thought to provide the physiologic effect that's attributed to cannabis. The first is THC. This is the plant's primary psychoactive component, which may cause a euphoric mental state or sedation in a dose-dependent manner for the user. The effects produced vary, and of course it also depends on the user itself, but this includes relaxation, pain relief, increased appetite, uh, paranoia or anxiety, and that's just to name a few. Now let's talk about CBD. This chemical is not as psychoactive as THC, and in fact, it's thought to oppose the experience produced by this chemical um, when added together, and so it actually can decrease that high effect. However, research does suggest that CBD may have analgesic, anti-inflammatory, anti-epileptic, and even anxiolytic properties, so something to be mindful of as we think about medicinal cannabis use in the future. Now that we've gone over these two categories, cannabinoids and non-cannabinoids, take a moment to think about how cannabis is typically used. So it's, you may have seen it smoked, vaporized, even baked. And what do these all have in common? Heat. Heat is important because raw cannabis plant typically contains inactive compounds. So for example, it contains TCHA, which needs to be converted into TCA. And the way it's done is through time, and also heat speeds up that process. So what heat does is it decarboxylates that chemical into the active component, producing um, this chemical that produces the effects that we just mentioned. And that's something important just to keep in mind because there are different ways to use cannabis, and most of the ones that you may come across involve the application of heat. So it's just good to know why. And remember, it's all about decarboxylation. So that's a quick overview of the chemicals found within the cannabis plant. Thanks for watching. I hope you stay tuned to our next video in this series. And see you next time. Thanks, pharmacist. Bye-bye.